Hey, welcome. Uh, in this video, I want to tell you a little bit about this uh, Zenith Z675 battery, which was made for this radio, which is a Zenith 5G500. Now, this battery is a 6-volt A, which supplies the tube filaments, and a 75-volt B, which supplies the uh, tube plates. Before I show you more about this battery, uh, let me mention a couple things about this radio. This Zenith 5G500 uh, certainly didn't win any design awards for uh, Zenith, but it's historically important and the reason is because uh, Zenith did get a patent or two on the antenna that was designed and developed for this radio because it led to the uh, production of the Zenith transoceanic radios like this one shown over here, which is a early uh, post-war model. And... Uh, the patent that Zenith got for this radio, let me get this turned around here. Is for this antenna, which they called a wave magnet. And it was designed so that you could remove it from the radio and with these two suction cups here, you could attach it to the window of a bus or a railroad passenger car or the window in a steel building, which would enable you to uh, pick up radio stations that would otherwise be blocked by the uh, steel surrounding the structure or the vehicle. And so they got a patent for the wave magnet, and they also got a, pagnet, a patent for these little um, suction cups, which are hinged. So when you attach it to the window, you were then able to swing it around to pick up the strongest signal. Now these little suction cups, um, they're all dried out now. And some people soak them in brake fluid to make them supple again, but it doesn't last. So the only thing that you can really do is replace them. And uh, you can find replacements on um, Amazon and probably other online sources. These are actually made for those long grippers, um, but you can use them to replace the cups here, and then you can attach this to a window uh, if you have the need to do that. Otherwise, it just stays in the back of the, uh, uh, the case here and works just fine. Uh, these are blue, but you can probably find them in black. The uh, radio is a five-tube radio. It's called the Universal model, and it only picks up uh, AM broadcasts but it, uh, unlike the transoceanics over here, which used a 9-volt, 90-volt AB battery, and they used a 4-pin <clears throat> battery connector. So here I've got the, uh, the connectors. Uh, this one is a 4-pin with evenly spaced uh, sockets for the pins from the battery uh, too close together, too further apart. And it's used on all the models of the uh, Zenith uh, transoceanic radios, like this one over here, along with um, uh, RCA, Strataworld uh, portables, and some of the Halicrafters portables as well. And uh, the difference is that this battery here uses also a four pin, and I know you can't see these, and I'll show you close-ups in, 
in just a second. Um, four pins, but they're asymmetrically arranged uh, in the uh, uh, socket. So the reason for that is so that you don't accidentally try to use a 9 volt, 90 volt battery with this radio. So the problem is, if you want to make a battery for this radio, because you can't buy them anymore, it's real hard to find the male connector that would mate up to the cable here. And as you can see here, we have a male connector. There are four pins in there, and they're asymmetrically arranged so that they will uh, made up with this yeah. made up with a battery like that. So that's the 5G500. Now we'll take a closer look at this battery. So to uh, power our Zenith Z675 battery, we need six volts for the uh, A supply, which is the supply to the tube filaments and we need 75 volts for the B supply, which goes to the two plates. Uh, pretty easy to get the six volts that we need for the A supply because four D cells in series will give you six volts. One and a half times four would be giving you six. Now there's no way to get to exactly 75 volts with um, cells, but the only thing that we can fit in here in the box because there's limited room is to use 9 volt cells. And so we're going to use eight 9 volt cells in series to produce what is nominally 72 volts, nine times eight, but actually fresh batteries are um, above the nominal voltage of the battery. So your four D cells are actually producing about almost seven volts when they're fresh. And these eight nine volt cells will actually be putting out about 77 volts when the batteries are fresh. So you're actually above your 75 volt nominal current requirement for the radio. Uh, of course, as the batteries are depleted over time, they will need to be replaced. And uh, you'll get many, many hours out of these D cells, but you're only going to get somewhere between 40 and 80 hours of play time out of these uh, 9 volt cells. So they're going to have to be replaced more often than the D cells. Um, what a lot of folks do is they buy 9 volt cells at a dollar store. <clears throat> For a dollar, maybe a dollar quarter a piece. I don't know what the uh, current price is. And uh, because they don't last all that long, uh, they're not going to be in there long enough uh, perhaps to <clears throat> leak or anything like that. But you do need to keep an eye on D cells. If you put this radio away for uh, a long period of time with batteries in it, uh, it's very likely that one of these D cells will leak. Uh, fortunately, with a modern alkaline battery, you can usually clean the mess up with white vinegar uh, and it won't 
cause any damage. Um, but the best thing to do is, if you're going to put your radio away, not use it for a long period of time with this battery, or any battery that you make using a combination of D cells or uh, double A's or nine volts, uh, always remove the cells from the holders if you're going to store the battery for a while. So uh, to use the battery, uh, we obviously need to put these back in the box. Um, as I mentioned, these are in series, so these are connected here. And you just stack them, lay them in there, and close the box. And then we'll hook it up to, to the radio. All these portables made by Zenith have a safety feature which requires you to plug your AC cord into a receptacle on the back apron of the chassis. That's so you're not using the radio on battery power with it plugged into the AC line. And also, it activates a switch. When you plug this in, um, it moves a switch that switches the power supply from AC over to battery power. So that's the first thing you want to do. It can be a little stiff, but now you can see it's in there. Uh, sometimes the slots are on top of the chassis and you put it down in. On this one, it's it goes in uh, vertically. And uh, you want to make sure your radio is off when you plug this in. <clears throat> and then you just line up your connector. These don't have a any kind of a mark to help you line it up, so you kind of have to fumble around to get it. But uh, once you do it a little while, you kind of get the, you know where it goes. So. I got that on without too much difficulty. And uh, so now we're hooked up and we should be able to uh, turn on the radio and play it on battery power. On battery power, there's no warm up time. It's like a uh, solid state transistor radio. Power comes on immediately. Our insurance. Insurance Doctor works with dozens of insurance companies to get you the best rates and coverage. Insurance Doctor will. Not a lot of uh, AM stations around here and out in the garage with all these uh, lights, fluorescent lights and LED lights and stuff. There's a lot of interference. <laughs> These radios were actually made to be played on battery power and the AC was for backup when your batteries were dead. And they are really good performers if you can get away from modern radio frequency interference. Take it out to your backyard, out on your deck. Um, take them camping with you. <clears throat> and they become very sensitive you're not picking up AC line noise, uh, and uh, hopefully you're far enough away from any other electronic devices that could be interfered with. Well, these, when these radios were made, uh, you didn't have much in your house that caused radio frequency interference, or RFI. So, uh, they're not really well protected against that and uh, flat screen TVs and modems and uh, fluorescent lights, uh, LED lights can all cause various uh, hums and uh, other kinds of uh, undesirable noise uh, that's picked up by the uh, receiver in your radio. So you really can enjoy them best on battery power uh, outdoors away from 
uh, obviously power lines and things like that. But that's pretty much it. This is the Zenith 5G 500 radio. Kind of a homely little fellow, but historically important. And uh, if it hadn't been for this radio and, and the patent on this uh, wave magnet radio, uh, we wouldn't have all these wonderful Zenith uh, transoceanics that uh, were made from 1941 uh, up until uh, 1963. Uh, there were several models of the transoceanic and we won't go into those now. There's some other videos on my channel that cover those. But uh, this little radio is kind of a fun little radio, but uh, again, it's historically important because of that antenna, which is also used in those transoceanics. Be sure to watch the uh, end titles uh, of this video, and uh, that will tell you where you can get a reproduction Z675 uh, battery like this one here, if you would like to have one for your Zenith 5G 500 radio.